righty. Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, and today I am pleased and honored to have our guest on, and that is Ontario musician Dana Lee. Dana, thank you so much for doing this. This is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, for those who are listening, uh, Dana is a musician. She's, like I said, hails from Ontario. Her newest single, Home to Myself, uh, has recently been released. Uh, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about her new album that's coming out as well on March 25th. That is Made in the Image. I just wanted to make sure I got the name correct there. So I had to write, look it down on my notes. Um, but <laughs> before I start into the musician, the music, the album, I want to talk about you, the artist. And I start off all my interviews with musicians the exact same way. So Dana, you're no exception to that rule. So Dana, <laughs> what does music mean to you? Oh, that is a very loaded question. <laughs> Hence um, why we have a half so, hour together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, there, there are a lot of things I'd like to say about that. But the, actually yesterday I was doing um, some songwriting with some of my students and it was a new class that I had just started. And the class is about um, expression and songwriting. And it's a new twist on, a, on choir, I call it, when I'm working with the kids, um, because we're singing our own songs. We're writing them together. And when I was introducing myself to the new batch of students, I was sharing about music and, and what it means to me. And I was sharing with the kids um, music I don't know today where I would be if it wasn't for music. I, I, maybe I wouldn't even be here to be quite honest with you. Um, there have been many times actually here on my desk, I'll show you. I know people probably can't see this cause I'm talking to you, but it says music saved my life. And I, I can think of many occasions. If I didn't have music, I wouldn't be here. I, I wouldn't be here. Um, because of relationships that have ended. Um, my, my faith, it's the way I express my, my faith uh, to God. Um, it's the way that I express when I'm feeling unwell, if there's anything medical that's going on with me. And I've had a rough year with that. And, and the music has just, it's, it's shown itself again and just has come through. So music, basically, I would say it's my lifeline. I, I appreciate you saying that because uh, for anyone who's listened to the show before and uh, Dan, I did not prepare you for this. So I do apologize for just <laughs> dropping this bombshell on you, but uh, over the last two years, I've been, uh, I was diagnosed with a, a brain tumor in 2020. And what I found oh was music helped me through that process and songs would reminisce with myself and be able to help me through that, that the trauma, the, 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 the ups and downs. So I, I completely understand where you come from when you say music is sort of a lifeline for you. And I, I, I appreciate you saying that because I find that not a lot of people acknowledge that. So I, I got to ask the, 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 the initial follow-up, why is it such a lifeline for you? Because you, you, you've been open about your battle with your faith and music and being your, your, your not your music, but yourself. How did music become a lifeline in that battle? Thank you. And I just want to say, I, I'm so sorry that that's like, I, wow. Yeah. I didn't expect to hear that from you. I'm just meeting you. And it's like, wow. I usually, I'm, usually I'm don't so, drop so that bombshell on people, but you talked about it. So I just wanted to give yeah. sort of a credence to, well, I, I know exactly what you mean by that. And uh, I do appreciate you saying that because I know that there's a lot of people out there who are in the same position as you who say that music does help them, whether it be creating music, performing music, uh, writing music. It does, it does give you an outlet and a venue to express what you're feeling, but also to listen to sort of escape from the realities that is troubling you. Absolutely. And um, I do appreciate that you actually... I know this is going out on the airwaves, but I, I appreciate that you shared that in the space with me because I'm sure it wasn't easy to share that. So thank you um, for taking the time and, and I'm sorry. And But yes, music is a lifeline. And um, for me, um, this year, um, 
you know, the album was in the works for me, but I would say within the last year and a half, um, I had the plan to make the album Made in the Image. And, and it really is about my identity and my faith coming together. And um, I really believe that the, the songs on this album specifically can be a bridge between um, the LGBTQ community and the Christian faith. I grew up uh, in the church, a uh, pretty traditional family. I mean, even when I came out to my family, um, I came out to my brother and his wife first. Um, I was scared. I, I was actually living in Edmonton at the time. I was in Bible college. And um, and it just, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on at that time. And um, it just, it wasn't a really great time in my life. and. And I know I, I needed to move back to Ontario and it was time to move home. And I was scared because I'm like, who am I going to be when I get back? Because I've been this person out here hiding. And so now, so then I, anyways, to make the story a little shorter, I, I shared with my family and then, you know, it, it happened how it un unfolded, but you know what, they've always supported me. And, um, but with this album, here I am coming to myself in this album and marrying the two ideas and wanting to have this bridge between my faith because it's so real to me. And I know there are so many more Christians out there that are just like me um, that have this struggle who've been told they're less than or that grace hasn't been sufficient for them either. And I think that that's incorrect. Um, that's not right. And um, so I felt that music, this is the universal language. And I believe that I can express what's going on for me, which I know is going on for other people through song. Um, and so that was my lifeline with this album. In the past, um, I, I mean, I had a really bad car accident um, in 2017, I had a concussion. So I wrote an album called The Post-Concussion Syndrome. And, and that was my battle when, you know, being in the dark and just, if anybody, you know, if you've had a concussion, you know, that's life altering as well. Um, and it can be, and then, um, yeah, just other stuff this year during the course of this album, I went and got my first COVID vaccine and I actually, um, the, the very second it went into my arm, I had an immediate, uh, adverse reaction. So I was very sick and I actually ended up, uh, moving in with my parents over the summer because I was so weak and, um, just everything I'm, I'm good now. I feel like I've been healed, but I feel lucky because I know that some people um, haven't been so lucky. But anyway, all to say this album was done during that time. It was my only shining light where I'm like, OK, it's going to be OK on the other side of this. I'm going to be OK. I've still got the music. I can still speak through that. And uh, anyway, I hope that was uh, no, it, <laughs> a short, it, yeah. sort of a long an answer to your question. Well, if you didn't talk, then it would be a very bad audio interview slash video interview. <laughs> so I'm very glad that I you're willing, talk, to have, will, willing to have these conversations. <laughs> when, when I first stumbled upon the song Home to Myself, it spoke to me in so many ways. Um, now, for those uh, who listen, no, I, I've, I've struggled with religion. I've struggled with uh, the connection with a higher power. And uh, this spawns back to losing a partner, um, but mm. cancer as well. So there's been times, but uh, as a member of the LGBT community as well, I, I know that when I was listening to this, I, I could while you're talking about faith, I was I was I heard it from a different perspective. I heard from it as a family perspective because when I came out it was very hard and family was very mm -hmm. hard to accept it so I can imagine from you from your perspective writing about this so openly and if you read the lyrics to the song home to myself it is such a an amazing story an amazing song that you listen to it you you read it and you go you've gone through a lot of stuff to get to where you are, to accept who you are as a member of the Christian uh, faith and uh, a member of the LGBT community. Can you just talk me through writing this song so openly and so passionately to express who you are and who you have become? Thank you. Um, yeah, actually this song was written on, um, on I think it was called 
I mean, I'm not, I don't keep up with like all the days that there are now like national wine day and national this. And <laughs> what do you mean? You don't, you don't like... celebrate national Elmo Sesame street day. Come on. I thought that's like a national <laughs> holiday here in Canada. <laughs> that's right. Eh? Um, no, but this song, I actually wrote this song on, I think it was called, it was national coming out day. October um, 11th. That's the day <laughs> I wrote this song. I remember it was in the fall and, uh, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I, I need to write about this for me. And I mean, it, it wasn't when it when I did come out, I would say to the people that it mattered to, because I mean, I was out in Alberta, just to the people, they were acquaintances, and I didn't really care. But when it comes to shove, we all know that we can, it's harder sometimes to be ourselves in front of the ones that we love the most, like our families, like I'm sure we all have those stories, right? Um, so this song, I really felt it was important um, because the, I, I'm sure I do. I am lucky in the in the sense that I do have people in my life that accept me, but there are those who still I know talk about me behind my back and say certain things that don't have the gall to say it to my face, right? And um, one less anyway, Christmas card you song, have to send out every year. That's how that's I look right. at it. If you, you talk about me behind my back, not getting a Christmas card this year, no matter what. <laughs> Right. And, and even to those that I went to Bible college with, um, I was, I was actually quite afraid, um, about what they might think. Cause I'm sure everybody talked and I'm sure people said things and, you know, I never had a boyfriend or I never, you know, I wasn't doing the I typical either, things, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody went to, to that school to get married, you know, and I, I wasn't like, I was there to do music. That's what it was. They had a really great music program and I really wanted to worship God. That's what it was for me. And all the other girls that I was going to school with were going to meet a husband and it really wasn't my thing. So when I think about the song and how people talked in light of the gay community, even when I was in school, it wasn't very Christ-like. I'm just going to tell you that they didn't talk very Christ-like um, about fellow humans like when you think about that even it's like the whole premise of christianity is love you know and the way you're talking about your neighbor is not so loving you know and um yeah so i just gave myself permission to be like who do you think you are you know you don't get to decide who i love or who loves me and how i feel inside and yeah that this is my big F U song, I think, in a very nice way with a cello and piano. <laughs> well, I, I, so I, I will be honest, after I fell in love with the song, I went back and listened to basically almost every other song that you've ever released. And I will be honest that I, I, you have a fan out in Calgary now, so I'm looking forward to following your career. But I want to talk about one in particular, because this isn't the first song that was you released that sort of talked about your uh, your your faith and your life as well because you talk i just want to make sure i get the right name of the, album, of the song correct but where is the love this is another oh. song that you released in 2021 that it yet again links will be in the show notes i would highly recommend if you have time and you want to listen to a great song go listen to both these songs because they're fantastic but talk to me about where is the love as well because this was the sort of the first song that you released in 2021 and then this new song in 2022. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, so that that song's actually going to be on the album as well. Um, so where is the love? <laughs> I'm like, I was scared to use that title for the song because I'm thinking people are going to pull up the Black Eyed Peas and they're, <laughs> they're not going to find my song. <laughs> I know? didn't even so... think about that until now. Now you've got me thinking, <laughs> Now I'm going to get copyright claim that I'm singing their song, but no, oh, no your, your song is amazing though, because thank you. You talk about a journey in that song that I, I can relate to so much because you talk about church and Wesley and finding church and finding the, like find, finding Wesley and then going to the middle of church. And I'm like, I know exactly what she's talking about. Even though you don't openly say anything, you are saying so much in that song that resonates with myself. And yet again, I'm kind of fangirling right now because I've kind of really have become a fan of yours that you, 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 are, you are able to write a song with so much emotion 
that you don't see that too often. So how do you write songs that portray so much emotion in such a short period of time? Oh, thank you. Um, well, I think it just comes back down to giving yourself permission. I think it, it, this is, is it, part of having your voice, right? Is just giving yourself permission to say what's happening internally and getting it out on the paper, uh, getting it out. And I, when I write songs, it's, it's just a hot mess on a piece of paper. I don't type things. It's not nice. It's literally write it, rip a page out, write it again, rip a page out until I get it basically fine tuned to how I feel that it should be. And so I think it's just about writing what's coming up as, you know, the melody is, it's just there. And I'm just, you know, I wanted to talk about love. What is love? Where is the love? You know, um, I think the church community um, of the past, anyways, I do see progressive Christianity rearing its head and it's coming up. And I think it's a really great thing. I think we've moved so far. I think you had a show on about conversion therapy uh, and I listened to it and it was really great. And I, I think I, I know of, of that world within the church um, you know, and, and I think we're moving away from that. It's like the veil is coming off and we're seeing people, but we need to love people. Christianity is about love. Christ is about love. And, um, it, so, so yeah, I, I gotta sorry. ask the question I'm gonna, and I, I don't want to become political in this show and I, I, because I want to stick to you, but if you listen to that conversion therapy, I'm assuming you saw the other episode that was aired that week, which with the Christian Heritage Party's leader, Rod Taylor, and he makes some disparaging remarks about uh, same-sex marriage and how it shouldn't be allowed and you need. So how do you balance that as a musician when you hear people spew from the Christian faith that what you and I do, love the people who we want to love, and balance that out with your music and who you are, because that would be challenging for me. And you've done it such in an uh, in a awe-inspiring way that I go, I give you credit because you're, you're up against, like you're putting the rock in a hard place because you have one side of the Christian faith saying one thing, one side being progressive. So how do you balance that? It is a hard balance, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I really believe there are many things, even biblically, that I feel have potentially been taken out of context for years and years, translations that have been taken out of context. And, you know, that movie that's coming out, um, I think it's called 1946, and it's about the word homosexual in the Bible that has been, when it was translated into English, it, it was incorrect. It didn't actually mean what we think it meant. And so for all these decades, we've been, we've been saying that gay people are going to hell and, and <laughs> that's not what that passage meant, right? So I think if we look at people, so there are many people who are traditional, right? And, and I have family members that are like, oh, you can only read the King James Bible, right? But they don't know any different. So I, I just treat it with a grain of salt and, and I love them anyway, but, yeah. and I'm not gonna change an 85 year old woman's mind, right? So I'm just gonna love love that person and 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 just continue being myself. And, and if they don't like it, well, it, it is what it is. And there's no, I can't get upset, right? Like I can't, I'm not gonna argue with someone that I know in my heart what is right, so. No, and I appreciate that. Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit calgarycaesarfest.com and get your tickets today. But let's get back to your music and how you write, because you, 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 you so eloquently said that not a lot of musicians will openly admit they'll write something down, rip it out of the paper, throw it away, write something else down until they get it right. But take me through that process of writing. How does it come to you? Is it something that you're 
thinking about 24 seven? Is it something where you have to sit down at the table? Take me through the writing process of uh, a Dana Lee song. Okay, that's a cool question. Um, most of my songs come to me in the shower. Um, the I, I melodies. Would, I would say the same thing, but I would not be in the same realm even with you <laughs> because my husband will attest I have the worst singing voice ever. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Um, so I do keep my phone close by when I am in the shower. And uh, I would say a lot of the times what I find myself doing is reaching out of the shower, grabbing my phone, hitting the audio record button on the phone and humming or singing into the phone while I'm still in the shower water going and I'm singing for like three and a half minutes, what is coming up? And then I'm like, okay, or something like that. And then I end it. And then when I actually have time to sit down at the piano, I'm listening to it. And then um, it, it just, it just happens. Um, there are other times when I just sit down and uh, like that day on national coming out day. And I just, it just, it poured out of me and I, I can't even say where it came from. It just felt like I needed to write it. So just, uh, I just want to clarify here. So what you're saying is the melody comes first in your songs. Yes. Yes. That's exactly true. That must, is it harder for you to cre uh, create lyrics and then the melody? Because I, I've talked to many different artists who say completely different things where they say the lyrics have to come first and then I can think of the, the melody afterwards. But is it easier for you to just let the words flow out when you hear that background melody going on? Yes, I would say so. That is that is probably accurate. If I'm hearing the tune or the melody, yes, the words just they just start flowing out. Absolutely. And for for this newest song, "Home to Myself," um, how was that melody for you when when you when you first started humming it? I'm assuming in the shower on National Coming <laughs> Day. How, how was that <laughs> melody? Because. I can imagine when you're doing a uh, a story, a song like this, where you're opening up about yourself and opening up about uh, you finding a home, it must be sort of gut wrenching because I, I've listened to it so often that you, you get entrenched by the melody of the song that you just go, whoever came up with this must have been like feeling some very raw emotions during this time because, like you said, the background, the piano. It's so fantastic, but I, I, I want to know where does this come from? Like you, you're able to tell such a raw story and the melody brings a new dimension to the song that I, mm. I've never heard in another song in my life. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. And I apologize if it sounds like I'm trying to like blow smoke, but I'm not. I honestly listen to this song. I've been listening to it on repeat. And I've just, I've come to love what you do. And I, I can, I rarely say that to people. I, I say I'm a fan, but like your music has spoken to me in a way that I've never felt like a song has spoken to me in the last two years, especially going yeah. through what I've gone through. So I, I, I appreciate the song. So the melody, like yeah. how, how gut-wrenching was it to like listen to the song for the first time after you recorded the, the melody, recorded the lyrics and go, I have something here because I think you do. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I think it actually hit me um, when the harmony part came back from my friend, Jeremy, when I heard his voice and how our voices blended together, but then with the cello layer, layered on top, I think that's, I, I actually cried so hard. Um, I, I actually I actually took a video of myself crying um, because I wanted to capture what it was like because I was so sick. I, I really was really sick over the summer. Like I was so sick and I didn't think I was going to survive. There were actually many times when I thought, is am I going to die from this injury? And um, getting that piece of music finalized um, I, I, I actually, I feel like I had the same feeling as you're experiencing as well. And even more so actually, when I did the live off the floor version, um, when I watched that video, I actually, uh, I'm overcome with emotion as well, because, um, it is my story. 
it's my story of coming home to myself. It's, it's, it's finally not, not allowing fear to get in the way of being my full potential in, in the image of God and, and how I'm supposed to be on this, this earth. I think a, a lot of times we get paralyzed in fear um, about what other people think of us. And I've spent my entire life caring what other people have thought um, I, I should, how I should be. And um, because of that, I can't, I knew I couldn't reach my full potential because we're just scared, right? We, we get just locked in fear. But if we just let that go, holy, I was sharing the other day, it's, it, life isn't perfect, but we'll definitely live a little bit more peaceful inside. I know that for sure. Releasing albums like the one that you're about to made in the image, where you 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 talk you, you write songs about finding yourself, who you are, finding love, and then releasing so- an album around having a brain concussion and sort of that. Does your music speak to you about what you're what's going on in your life at the time of when you're creating an album? Because it seems like you're telling a story of who Dana Lee is through your albums, whether it be the journey from your concussion, whether it be the journey of finding who you are. Do you tell a story with each of your albums that you release? Absolutely. And um, why is I that feel, important to you? Um, it's definitely a way that I can have closure with with certain things so with the concussion it was a way that I could have closure um I ended up quitting my job during the course of writing that album I had a job in high tech and I quit that job and just leaped I did took the big leap into music I le- leaped leapt into music and um and then there was uh, the the album after that sunshine and bonbons i went through a miserable breakup it was so horrendous and my heart was crushed for for like 2 years like it was like an ongoing breakup that just was drawn out it was like inflicting pain on myself right and it was not physical pain but just the pain of the interaction still with you know there there's no easy answers with breakups so that was that so did that album complete closure. And I felt like I was healed after I did that album, um, from the hurt of that now on to this album. And I feel that I'm at a place where I'm hundred percent. Okay. With, um, with my identity and, um, I don't need to close the door on my identity, but I can now speak freely about it. And it's the closure of being, uh, fearful, I think. I think that what that's about now. Now, with the restrictions lifting, with mandates lifting around COVID-19, mask mandates, musicians like yourself who have been quarantined for the last two years, not being able to travel, get out on the road, this is coming to an end. Uh, Could we be seeing a Dana Lee tour here where you're potentially coming out to Calgary? Because I will be out with my lighter when you're singing your song, (laughs) singing it. If you come out here, will you be coming out on tour? I would absolutely, I, I'm planning it right now. Um, I wasn't sure how things might look because of COVID. Like everything is still so unpredictable, right? And yeah. and even though some of the, the mandates are lifting, we still have to be very, I think, careful um, with some of these variants that are floating around because yeah. they can blow up again, right? So, um, but yes, I would, I would like to, to tour the album. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like. I would love to come back to Alberta. I have tons of friends and people that love to support my music in the province of Alberta. Um, I am doing a release show here in Ontario. Um, and I am doing um, a few appearances at, uh, well, I'm doing at the end of the month, I'm doing an appearance during the offertory at um, MCC in Toronto, um, the Metropolitan Community Church. And say and hello to also, Reverend Jeff Rock for me. I will. I, I love him and Pastor June and yep. just like, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great space. And uh, I've been joining them virtually online and uh, yeah, I think they're just a really great community. And I will also be joining them, um, I believe, 
uh, at the Pride Service in Toronto this summer. So. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I want to talk about the... uh the album and what what we can look forward to because i've already heard the first two songs that we've already talked about but what other songs can we be looking forward to is this more self-identified uh, songs that, about who you are or just talk me through about creating this album that is being released Okay, yes. Well, thank you for asking the question. I really do appreciate you having me on here. I think it's really great that you're giving uh, that you're giving space to the music and to an artist like me. So I, I am very grateful um, for the time. Um, well, hey, I'm thankful for you to come on the show because like I said, I will talk to anyone, but when we have a guest like yourself of a caliber like yourself who want to come on and talk about a song and talk about a journey like you've had, I... We'll talk about, we'll talk for an hour if you want. <laughs> That's great. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so the album itself, so you've heard two songs off the album. Um, I have 17 songs total on the album, um, which yes. was, <laughs> I, I actually, I, I actually received a grant from the Ontario Arts Council to put towards this album, which I've never received any sort of funding in my life. And I thought, wow, when I got the letter saying, you've been accepted, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. And I, I was, I cried and I was grateful. But in the grant proposal, I put, I'm gonna put 12 original songs. That's what it was. And um, well, we're at 17 tracks and, um, there are a few songs on there that that are not my songs so I have um, a cover called Lord How Did It Feel and I just really enjoyed that song growing up I heard it in church a few times and it's it's basically about the journey of Christ and and the torment that he had to go through living as a human on this earth um and it, yeah I think it's I like the words um and then I have another cover on this on this uh, album and it's one that I had on a on a previous album it's it's sort of like a bonus track so it's revisiting it um but the original music I have this song about my time at bible college and um just the experience of being in the closet well being at bible college and what that was for me so that's a song that you can look forward to on that album um, there's songs Here's a question, from my mom. because I want to follow up on the statement that you just made. And I apologize for interrupting. I just, I love, I love a conversation like this because it feels like we're old friends. It doesn't feel like we're, yeah. and it feels like we're old friends, but I want to talk about that process of winnowing down songs that you potentially want to have on your uh, album from, I'm assuming you probably have more than 17 songs that could have been on this album but you came up with 17 you originally had planned for 12 is it hard to choose what songs goes on albums because i can imagine i'm looking at an album like a child for you each song is a different part of that child and you want to put the best parts together to make a great child so was it hard to create this album when you have so many good songs that you have to choose from to create this unique album that you've put out well, thanks. I uh, I love that you said you have so many great songs. Well, I appreciate you having the faith in me that I have great songs. <laughs> um, I it was hard. I mean, you do you have to pick what you feel are the are the best that will share the theme, I guess, of the topic or the subject matter. I'm not sure if I if I'm the best at doing that, but I I did pick 17 songs or 17 tracks, I would say that um, what, just trying to mirror what's happening inside of me um, and my experience and just taking the listener through the walk of, 
I guess, coming out, really, that's basically what it is. And, and that does stem right back to my childhood and, and some of the, the, the songs that had really indelible stamps on my heart growing up in the church. Um, you know, I'm not going to throw that community away or it's about blending the two. Um, and so that's, so that's where I am at when I'm choosing the songs. Now I do, you're right. There, there are like 50 songs, right. That I could have picked to throw on this album, but narrowing it down, it was tough. It really was. Um, but yeah, hey, that means that it, we have another album that we can look forward to maybe in 2022 later right. on. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Absolutely. You never stop creating. Um, I, I, I remember an interview with an artist, that, not on my show, on someone else's show. I think it was probably with Fox News or CNN or something. But Toby Keith, country music star down in the States, yeah. says, I create albums where I know, and this is just me being me, that I'm paraphrasing here, where every song on that album I could sell to a radio station and I've listened to your past albums and any one of your songs could be put onto the radio when came when coming up with made in the image is that how you kind of looked at it as you went and said the best songs need to be on here and each one of these songs I could potentially hear it on the radio oh that's a good outlook um I I don't know if I went into it like that uh I would love, I would love for, you know, any sort of airtime with the music. I think that's, that's really even, you know, college stations or commercial stations or even playlists or even just being on a show like this to talk about it and people can search it up and listen after. I think just any place and space that I have uh, the option to share the music. I'm always, always grateful. So yes, radio, I would love to hear each of those songs. And yes, I can in my mind's eye, if I could picture my songs being played on the radio, I can picture them, people watching the YouTube videos. I can picture people searching up playlists and finding it. I, I want people to hear and experience, um, I want them to feel when they're listening to it. I, I want them to be able to find it somewhere I, I don't want to limit it to just you know here you can find it here only I want it to be everywhere I want people to hear so you, you've opened up a great line of questioning now because I, I think in today's age where and I, I I mean this with respect to all the musicians out there because I think there's great musicians all over the world but we have become swamped with a lot of music so how do you stand out how do you get your message out because I will be honest and let's be, I think we'll be completely blunt here, but you have a niche market of Christian LGBTQ music. And how do you get heard in a ever evolving, nothing wrong with Taylor Swift, but Taylor Swift version of, because if I turn on the radio in my car, I'm hearing a lot of American songs right now. How does a Canadian songwriter, singer like yourself stand out and get your message out? I, yeah, I think um, you're right. I think there's, there's so much happening and there's always new music and it's always, it's, it's just a constant, right? And it, it, more than it has ever been. So yeah, it's hard not to get lost in that. But I think, like you said, there is a niche market and um, I know that there are people just like me that want to hear songs that they can, it does that pinprick on their heart because they do feel and know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So people know what I'm talking about. So they may listen to, I don't know, I, I, I like Taylor Swift, but they may listen to her and they may, it might do it for them. But they know that my lens, the lens that I'm writing from is the same as their lens. So it's gonna mean so much more to them because they know that I've walked the same road I've done. And these songs are about the very same experiences that we've all gone through in that community. I, I'm going to ask a personal question here, and I do apologize if it comes off the wrong way. And if it does, I'll try and rephrase it for you. Okay. While you are probably one of the few Christian LGBT queer artists in Canada, there are girls, boys right now who are in the Christian community who are struggling with their identity 
And when they have role models like yourself, who they can look up to, because I'm assuming you did not have role models like yourself to look up to as a child growing up in the Christian faith. What does it mean to you that young Canadians from coast to coast to coast, and even around the world, because we are such in a worldwide market now, have someone like yourself to look up to and say, I'm not alone. What does that what does that give you? Does it give you a sense of pride that you might be able to with your music help someone struggling with their identity today in the faith? Well, yeah, I actually haven't thought about that. Um, so when you say that and uh, it feels a little overwhelming, I'm not going to lie. I uh, I because I, I I mean I work with kids all the time. I teach music. I I I have my own business here where I'm I'm just surrounded with kids all day, every day. And when we wrap up this interview, I'm going to be heading over to my weekly choir where I'm going to be working with a bunch of students. And knowing the question that you just asked and knowing that um, I could potentially be a role model for anybody in the church, any students, any, any, any youth that are struggling with their identity. I, I think um, I'm humbled by the thought of that. Um, I don't want to take that lightly. I, I did have role models growing up, but they weren't part of the LGBTQ community. They were within the church and they were wonderful people. And I think about still to this day, they still are my role model um, or my role models. And if I could be that to somebody just so that they can be the true expression of themselves and, and not live in any sort of fear or um, have to worry about um, hiding themselves for a long time. Um, I just want to thank God for that. I think, I think that's, that's amazing. And I, and I just want to keep pressing on if it's making other people just want to be themselves, then I would, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing then. Well, I hope you keep on doing what you're doing because I, I find your music fascinating and I look forward to uh, the next album, the the one that you weren't able to put the other four, 33 songs on that, <laughs> that is going to be coming out probably in 2023 <laughs> or later and potentially seeing you live in person. I have family members back in Ontario and if uh, I see that you're in the area, I might come and take my husband to go see a night, a good night of music. So uh, thank you oh, for everything you, you do. Oh, thank you so much for having me and uh, allowing me the space to share and chat. And this was a lot of fun. And I really do feel like we've been like friends for a long time. Exactly. It feels that way. <laughs> um, before I let you go, though, how can people follow you? Because you need to get the message out there. And I'm assuming people you, you want people to follow your music. So how can people get in contact, learn more, buy an album? How can they do that? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so if you go to DanaLeeMusic.com and it's spelt a little funky it's d-a in the show notes h will be in the show notes so oh, okay yeah it's all okay. in the show notes you don't need to spell it out if you want to you okay, can good. but it's in the Here show i am old school <laughs> i'm old school d like delta a like alpha, a as an alpha like as as an nancy a as an alpha <laughs> so, so you yeah have your so website. if you go to that website there all the links are there for all the socials all the streaming, everything is there. If so, you know, if you're rocking it old school and you want uh, a physical CD, I do have those. Um, so if somebody wants that, they can get that there too. I will be buying one for sure. Um, Aww, Dan thanks, Dan Chris. Dana Lee, thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure to have someone of your caliber and someone of just your sincerity, because you find you don't find that too often in the, the, the realm that uh, you and I work in, me and media, you and music, and there's usually barriers for you. It seems like the barriers are down and you're willing to just have a good old fashioned conversation. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Uh, so like I said, everyone, uh, anyone who's listened to the show or watched the show before, the links are in the show notes. So if you're on YouTube right now, scroll down. There's all Dana Lee's information, website, Twitter, social media, all that fun stuff. If you're on, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, go back a page. You can find all the information there. Um, highly recommend you check it out because this is a great album. This is a great, uh, this song, Home to Myself, is fantastic. 
buy it if you can, because I know that it's a lot of hard times out there for people, but if you have the money and you can get this album, highly re recommend you do that. For everyone here at the Crossboard Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember everyone, just have a conversation with someone. Just go pick up a phone and call someone and get out from behind that five by two inch screen of your cell phone. Thanks so much, guys. Have yourself an excellent day.